the Liberal government still in power, but the loss of popular vote got a lot of attention. So we want to talk to our strategist roundtable. Peter Danolo is vice chair at Hill and Knowlton Canada. Jenny Burt is the former national campaign manager for Stephen Harper uh, and is uh, now with BBG. Is that right? I, I, I'm doing my own thing right You're now. You're doing your own All thing. Right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> she always has. That's what I like. Her. <laughs> we like that about you. Um, but so just to put so that we so we know you're a former liberal guy and you're a former conservative gal. We uh, both work for two strong prime ministers. Yes, agreed. Okay. So let's just start with, with this the whole narrative around this of the a country divided. And when you look at the map, it's easy to feel that way, right? It goes red, that weird indigo blue, uh, blue blue in the middle, and kind of you know mostly orange on on the left side. Do we need to worry about that, Jenny? Is this a, or is this kind of the way Canada goes? We no, I think we areas. I think we should be worried about it. Uh, the Bloc Québécois went from 10 seats up to 32 seats uh, in Quebec, so resurgent of of Quebec nationalism, separatism, and uh, in the West, you've seen uh, the popular vote. Uh, the Conservatives won every seat in Saskatchewan, uh, all but one seat uh, in Alberta, and seeing the popular vote, uh, the Conservatives went from 5.6 million votes in the last election to 6.1. And the vast majority of that uh, is in the prairies. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, there, people are very concerned. Uh, uh, the energy sector is very concerned right. about the current government and will be more concerned now with the resurgence of the bloc, uh, the NDP holding still 24 uh, seats, uh, and the Green Party getting three. So let's talk about, because in his uh, speech last night, and I want to talk about the timing of that speech, actually, uh, but Justin Trudeau said, to the people of the prairies, we are your government too. The people of the prairies did not elect Justin Trudeau. Um, they solidly endorsed uh, the Conservatives. Is that okay? It's a minority government. Can, can Justin Trudeau still reach and speak to them and, and keep their issues at the forefront? Well, he needs to. Whether he can is a different issue. I found last night that he was a little too triumphalist in his in his speech. Well, first of all, there was a timing issue, which you mentioned, yes. which is kind of a bad harbinger of, of kind of inter-party cooperation of making a minority. Okay, well, so let's just drill on that for a second. <laughs> uh, I was going to tweet about it, and I couldn't come up with a tweet that didn't sound um, awful for somebody who was still in the middle of reporting on this. Yeah. It, it was, I've never seen anything like that. Well, before. we saw it at Queen's Park here. We saw it in the provincial election Okay, so uh, but you've, year. we've seen it at that. But federally, leader to leader, never seen somebody so, uh, so rude. Could it be a mistake? Oh, yeah, I'm sure it was a mistake. Okay. Or, I mean, I can't imagine they would have done it on purpose. But Which that's... is the ex explanation everyone's giving is it's so awful that it, could, it had to be accidental. But it's, not, it's an explanation, not an excuse, right? Right, okay. And so, so yeah, so, I mean, like, get over that. His tone, I thought, was, was as if he'd been returned with a majority government. Listen, this is the first time since 1980 that we have a liberal government with no representation in the prairies. And, uh, and you know, the 1980s, in a lot of ways, were good years. In other ways, were the years of... Uh, terrific um, Western alienation in Alberta. Uh, and the difference this time is it's much more uh, extreme mm -hmm. than it was in the 80s. Plus, we have the 32 or whatever Quebec nationalists at the, at the minimum in the House of Commons. Yep. So this is a kind of a, a toxic brew of, of, uh, of disunity. And it's going to take a prime minister with kind of very fine touch to, uh, to make this work. And I think Justin Trudeau needs to prove that he has that. Uh, it's not like running a majority. And even running a majority was difficult for him. So let's talk about that fine touch and what Parliament might look like, um, because we've seen minority governments work in this country at various levels, uh, and we've seen them be a little less functional, I guess you could say. We have some big issues to tackle here, yes. including one of the reasons why you see that solid blue uh, is this feeling that we have the, there's a kind of a sense of urgency, but we don't know what to do about the fact that we are energy dependent and we need to pivot. What that looks like, we, we don't agree upon, for sure. Do, do you think this is a government that can bring it together, bill by bill? I mean, government happens in, in you yeah. know, Yes. slow motion. Well, well, and I think the concern the people in Saskatchewan and, and Alberta have is that this is a government that can't uh, uh, bring it together. But I think that Justin Trudeau is, uh, it's beholden upon him uh, to reach out to Premiers Kenny and Mo. If he hasn't already reached out to them, uh, then I think that is a, a grave mistake. If I were him, I would actually be on my, my government challenger and I would be heading out west to meet with those uh, with those premiers because there is a lot of uh, angst. We're looking at, at ridings in Alberta where the Conservatives won with 80 to 85 percent of the vote. That is, right. that is massive. And uh, it's more so than what you would see in, in Quebec. And in talking to people uh, in Alberta uh, yesterday that were messaging me when Peter and I were on TV, uh, they're concerned. They're, they, they feel that uh, they, there is not a lot of optimism that this 
prime minister hears their concerns uh, about uh, the uh, the energy industry. So then let's talk about the elephant in the room, which was the game changer in this election. It was always going to be bad, we thought, for uh, the Liberals. There was, that, there was risk. The resurgence of the bloc uh, took many by surprise, right? That kind of late in the campaign, all around it appears Bill 21. Yes. So one of the most divisive bills um, that you could possibly imagine for this country. Not one of the federal leaders stood up for Canadian values. No, we've talked about this before. Yes. And listen, this is the not Lucien Bouchard's block. It's not the block of the early 90s, and that's a good thing in one sense because we're not on a precipice of, of a referendum. Sovereignty, in Quebec. yeah. It's already, they're not separatists in that sense. They might be if it were opportunistic for them, yeah. but they realize it's not. But then there is this ugly issue of Bill 21, the, the kind of the, the, the timidity of the federal leaders, all of them, some more than others, uh, in dealing with it. And now, now there's not an election to hide behind. Mm -hmm. There's going to be have to be decisions that, as in the, in the coming stages over whether or not the federal government uh, intervenes in a in a court challenge and mm. supports a court challenge. And you know this is it's so antithetical to this prime minister's brand uh, and really to the country as a whole. And I think there's this reaction to it that that has a, the counter reaction of getting the backs up of Quebecers. And these things could escalate in a very ugly and very rapid way. So then let's focus on because one of the issues that of course investors will be watching um, and certainly foreign investors will be watching is what this means for the energy file already yes. a disaster right for many they're just they're kind of tools down for Canada because it's just so yes. if we is there a scenario in which we see the kind of anti pipeline NDP and the anti pipeline bloc coming together to defeat this government over issues in other words it, the liberals have to appease the bloc on things in order to get them on side well and that's the million dollar question and that's ultimately the concern that I think premiers Mo and premiers premier Kenny are going to have that uh, if if the liberals are purely looking at crass politics it's in their interest to continue what they view as a as a fight against uh, Alberta and Saskatchewan a fight against the oil industry. So I think that is the concern that the Liberals are going to have to alleviate. I mean, I would just counter that a little bit because I think that, listen, they've made the $4 billion purchase of the, of the pipeline uh, that's worthless if they can't get oil moving and they can't, you know, they can't start building it. Yep. Uh, the other thing is that the, the, the Liberal minority, although minority, is actually solid enough that they don't need to rely on the bloc and the on the uh, and the NDP. And third, you know, they can conservatives would vote when necessary to, to push this thing forward. And thirdly, and maybe most important, there's no more need for 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 parliamentary votes on the pipeline. That's right. Uh, you know, it's it's a matter of getting it built now, not getting it past the House of Commons. Okay, we only got a few seconds here, but so we we're of course running the math right on what this means. We don't do formal coalitions, particularly in Canada, so it'll be I think case by case, bill by bill. Is there a scenario where it actually is the two leading I mean you could argue that constitutionally and morally that it should be the conservatives and the liberals that come together on most things they were the two popular parties here yes, I know that's so not how apart. it works but yeah. could we see that happen it's it, on certain issues if if on certain issues we will this is going to be a minority government similar to uh, to Stephen Harper that it had in 2008 to 2011 it's so strong yep. uh, you, you need you know very little uh, support ultimately uh, Justin Trudeau needs 14 votes to uh, 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 to get any legislation passed. So I, I think we're actually going to see a very long uh, government. Now, the one caveat would be I think the Conservatives will have learned from the experience here in, in Toronto, Queen's Park. Oh, I was of, hoping you wouldn't say this out loud. Okay. <laughs> of, okay. how to, of how to uh, monkey around with committee systems to put the government on the spot in, in a big way. So I think they will do that. I think that genie's out of the uh, out of the lap, the toothpaste out of the tube. But I do think that... Uh, that because the point you made to me earlier, and I was like, oh, God, don't give them the idea, but is that we, it really gummed the works up and oh, made listen. the... McGinty it actually, government ineffective. It forced Dalton McGinty out of office. Literally, it forced him out of the premier's chair. Now, I, and those, so I don't think we've seen the end of SNC Lavalin. For you know, I think they'll be demanding documents and testimony, all sorts of stuff. But the Liberals have said that, that they're open to that. That's something that Trudeau yeah, said. Yeah, but, but it's moot whether they're open to it or not because they don't have control over yes. it now. Because the opposition combined will have control. SNC's over the committee. stock today su suggests that the market agrees with you. SNC's stock <laughs> is up today, so it suggests that they. I couldn't possibly comment on that. Right? <laughs> well, you know, you heard Steve Mnuchin. The market's always. Right. Thanks to you both for being here.